Hi, Molly. Thanks for joining us today for our podcast series on female empowerment, featuring the amazing women from Vermilion, the label. How have you been? Yeah, hey, Sarah. I'm really well. Thank you. Um, I've actually got tonsillitis at the moment, which is a bit of a bummer, but that's okay. Bear with me. Um, Yeah, I'm really well considering this current climate. How are you? I've been good. Yeah, just doing the whole isolation thing, trying to get through trying to pick up projects, that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Um, And you've relocated to Sydney from Brisbane. How's that going for you? Yeah, look, it's different. Um, The weather's um, not great. (laughs) It's very cold. Um, I'm definitely a Queenslander, so I'm not not loving the weather. (laughs) That's for sure. I'm missing Queenslander. Oh, so were you always in Brisbane before you moved to Sydney? Uh, no, I'm actually originally from Ely Beach up in North Queensland. Um, and then, yeah, I moved to Brisbane, did some studying and then graduated and, yeah, now I'm, I'm in Sydney. So, yeah. Wow. Big things happening for you. Woohoo. Um, so obviously, with everything happening with COVID-19 at the moment, the music industry is taking a pretty big hit because of this. So how are you feeling about your current position in the industry? Yeah, so look, um, I'm very fortunate in that being a musician isn't my full-time job. Um, I've only just kind of gotten back into the industry since 2016. So um, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of jumping back into things. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm using this downtime um, to write and be creative and um, really focus on my brand um, as a new sort of artist. So yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's very, it's very different. It's a, it's hard for lots of other like, artists, it's, it's, and lots of other industries as well. Like um, you know, the art sector is getting it pretty tough at the moment. Um, freelancers, the events industry. So yeah, it's definitely a tough time for everyone. But I'm pretty fortunate. Um, yeah, in my- absolutely. As you said, I guess everyone's um, copying it a little bit. So it is everyone in the arts, not just music, but even, as you said, you do some marketing. So I guess like everything that is involved in the marketing and what you guys are marketing would be affected as well. So Um, so why why did you get out of music for a while and just rejoin in 2016? Maybe two years ago, I kind of got back into it, started writing some stuff. But um, yeah, now that now that I've moved to Sydney, I've kind of I've wanted to get back into that in the in the writing and performing aspects. Sure. Yeah. So, do you find that in Sydney, like it is, um, I guess the music industry is a little bit more prominent down there than in Brisbane? Do you think that? it's easier to sort of make, as you said, develop your brand and develop who you are as a musician in a bigger city in Australia? Yeah, look, um, there's lots of really strong music scenes. Um, there's, like in Brisbane, it's, there's music scenes, um, but in Sydney they're definitely bigger and yep. there's a really tight community, I've realised. Oh, that's um, nice. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it is nice. It's a nice vibe, so it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. So do you think, like, from being a performer and somebody who sort of does all those behind-the-scenes things in the music industry, do you think that everything that's happened from, you know, the virus and the lockdowns and everything, um, has this added a bit of extra pressure on already existing issues that you guys face in the industry from, I guess, both perspectives as a performer and just sort of a marketer? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, look, I think in the industry, there's definitely, um, an issue that revolves around, um, sort of it being predominantly male dominated. And I think that, yeah, like that's an issue. And I think that, uh, COVID sort of brings out other issues as well. Yeah. So um, for example, like, um, it brings out, just how much artists are actually making for a living. Um, So, like, there's only really two income streams that artists can make, um, livable income streams that artists can make, um, and that's through tours and selling merchandise. 
Um, and unfortunately, with everything going on at the moment, um, tours are off the cards. So it's pretty much just selling merch. Um, and that's hard, I guess, for people aren't seeing the shows and it's not in their face as much. Exactly. I think that, like, um, with a lot of other industries, everyone's being told to, to pivot and to use virtual platforms as well. Um, yeah, and I, I think that's hard for artists because we're already, like, on streaming services. We're already virtual. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's definitely an issue that comes, comes um, that arises out of, of COVID. Like, um, with Spotify and iTunes, well, streaming platforms, it's artists only make 0.0006 yeah. um, per stream. So, like... You know, there's no real, real way that artists can live off that. And I, and I guess you're right. Like it is, it adds this not only like all the all the existing issues that they've had with competition and male dominance, as you said, but mm-hmm. now it's it's personal. It's more finance, and um, it it does make it really hard to make for music as a living. So, do you think that you'll see some artists drop out of the race now, or do you think it'll be all right? I think that's a hard way. I think that it depends how artists are going to use this time. Um, like, yeah, uh, back in the day it was like it was how many albums you sold and you made a lot of money on your albums as well as tours as well as merch. So I think that, um, yeah, now that like you can't really make any money off, off your actual music and, and selling it, um, yeah, I think that COVID definitely enhances enhances that issue. Yeah, um, and how much artists can kind of make through online streaming. Um, yeah. yeah, and in this isolation period, like they've got to use this time, use this downtime to really market yourselves. Um, yeah. No, you're right. That's true. That's I guess a lot of things to think about. So let's just go back to what you said a couple minutes ago about male domination being a huge uh, issue in the industry, not only for indie music, but I guess a lot in popular music as well. Um, but how do you think that this current situation has made that worse at all? Or do you think, if anything, it's made people sort of forget about those sort of, um, I guess, regular issues that they face when they're performing and doing music videos and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, look, I think that um, a couple years back it was definitely prominent and it was definitely an issue that was spoken about. Um, well, that's kind of when it started. It was a couple years ago and it's we've, we've been hearing it throughout. Um, and now with everything that's going on, I think it's kind of turned into more of, yeah, I think it's kind of enlightened the issue of artists and actually how they make money. So I think that I hope that once this period kind of passes that maybe we can go back and look at the issue of, of kind of the industry being uh, dominated by by males. Yeah. Personally, have you been affected by that, like the male dominance issue, or um, has it always been something that you've heard about but haven't really Im- like hasn't really impacted you personally? Yeah, look, um, being, so living in Early Beach um, and being younger, um, performing and going to gigs and and stuff like that, I did feel, um, yeah, like there definitely was, it it was very dominated by by males. But I think that, like, for example, I I had a gig at um, at a bar in, in Early Beach and I set up all my gear and um, I had this guy, he was a backpacker, he was from England, he came up and he pretty much told me how to, to have my sound and how to have my setup and he kind of just like, you know, just took over, over. Yeah. Was playing my, um, <laughs> with, my, with my mixer and it was really kind of condescending and, yeah, it was Very it wasn't great. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, so I, like I've had other like situations like that too um yeah it's just it's not yeah. cool and and it does make you sit there and think like I, I'm the one who's been hired I'm the one who's getting paid and why do you think as like a spectator that you can come in and and act like and, and lecture me on things that I've been hired mm-hmm. to do so yeah, I think that, like, 
Yeah. yeah, and like I'm open to like, oh, hey, you know, turn, yeah. you know, of course. change this. And I'm so open to that. But, yeah, don't jump up and. Oh, it's, as you said, it is condescending. And we've been doing a lot of research about um, this, like the male domination in uh, the popular music industry. So like that really LA sort of scene. Um, do you, are you worried? And one of the biggest things that we sort of noticed was that women's age and how um, when they do get older, there's this big stigma around them dropping out of the industry because of how they look or getting surgery and trying to maintain this younger sort of um, look. So are you, are you scared of what's going to happen when you get older or have you thought about that at all? No, look, I'm not too worried. I think that, I think that we're going to all band together and sort of, I think people are jumping on board with this movement and I like, yeah, I, I hope that um, in the future that it, it kind of drowns out a bit because it's getting a bit boring. <laughs> it is. It's a bit repetitive now and I, I hope that, as you said, everyone does band together and sort of show them that, you know, talent doesn't have an expiry date and I hope that that becomes a little bit stronger than looks and everything else. Um, but yeah, so do you, do you find that in your marketing role... Um, you know, for music, do you find that there is often a pressure for females to sort of um, sexualize themselves or anything like that in any of the marketing content or have you not really had to come across that yet? Well, I I haven't really had to come. I think um, kind of like maybe 10, 5, 10 years ago, I think it was very, you know, women were sexualized in in the industry and that like in music videos that they were like, you know, had little sexy, like even early 2000s, I think that sort of started Britney Spears is exactly what I'm sort of thinking of. Um, But I think it's kind of going away. It's like at the moment I think it's sort of just being your natural self um, is kind of being a little bit, yeah, (laughs) coming back. No, of course. Exactly like the way it should be um and I I think that you know indie music is so much more progressive than popular music you know you see some of the biggest hits in indie music like Stella Donnelly and those sort of names that are are making Mm -hmm. such like a rep of being feminist and it and it's cool and it's trendy and people are listening to it but then you look on the other hand somebody as big and strong as um Halsey just say um and you notice that there is tons of sexualization in her videos and her shoots but I guess it's it's does does that outweigh each other or does that you know what what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, look, I think that the pop industry is is a bit different to the like indie sort of folky scene. Um, yeah, look, I yeah, I for me, I'm a folk singer, so I've I'm kind of heading towards the Stella Donnelly. That's awesome. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I guess I hope it comes to a stage when females can do what they want and it's not to do with money and what's going to sell. So exactly right. Rough. as you said, we'll band together. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> so what advice as a female artist would you have wanted to receive when you were just starting back in 2016? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I think that not to, not to think about other people's thoughts and all the and judgment. I'm. I think that that's a big thing. Um, I mean, everyone's gonna, you know, have doubts and and so uh, be conscious of what other people think. But I think, yeah, just just write, just do what you love, and and don't think about other people. Um, who cares? <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. That's really that's that's good to hear. That's awesome. Um. So, what what is life like at home for you at the moment during? This whole set, like isolation. Do you have a setup or what? What does your day look like? Um, so again, I'm fortunate enough to work. So I'm, I'm working throughout the day, um, and I'm in a little tiny um, share house. So my room's pretty small. <laughs> um, so I don't have much of a setup, but um, I do have all my music gear here with me. So I have taken it out and plugged in an amp and had a had a play. And my my um, roommates are all very creative too so uh, right yeah it's good 
Yeah. Do you find it's um, better to be surrounded by those people that are creative in sort of a time like this when things can feel really negative? Yeah, look, I think it brings a bit of um, positivity and and light to to everything, being stuck indoors. Um, yeah, I think surrounding yourselves with creative people and like-minded people are, are good for your mental health. And, yeah, yeah, great. So with your marketing work, so you, are you working from home or are you still having to go into the office? Yeah, no, no, I'm working from home. Uh, I work for an event marketing company. Um, oh. I'm just doing their social media and, and stuff online, so... Cool. Yeah, no. yeah. yeah, that's good to sort of um, keep you preoccupied, I guess, so you don't feel like every day is slipping away from you. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's I'm very lucky. Awesome. Well, speaking of um, creativity, tell us about your new single, Coward Dressed as a Lion, which I believe is coming out on the 15th of June. Yeah, it is. I'm so excited. Um yeah, so it's my debut single. Um, it's, yeah, released on, hopefully will be released on the 15th of June. Um, yeah, it, it's generally just a song um, I wrote about unhealthy relationships. Um, but, I mean, anyone can really interpret it how they want, but that's sort of the underlying themes um, while I was writing it. Um, yeah, I wrote it at the beginning of 2018. So wow. um, I'm super stoked to finally have it recorded and out there because yeah no amazing so how how long has the process been for you to you know get it from that writing stage back in 2018 to the motivation to finally get it like mixed and mastered and everything else yeah so yeah I wrote it um in a night um it all just came like flooding out um yeah wrote it down I've been playing it literally since 2018 and then um with vermilion yeah they asked me if i wanted to record some stuff and i said yeah black i really want to record this and um jumped in the studios at the beginning of oh i don't know february i think it was um i asked campbell messer to help me out um he's great bless him um yeah so he helped me with some structural stuff and and some he's put some guitar in and he's got some vocals on there as well, which is really exciting. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. And then though so I've, um, it's now gone off to my mastering engineer. Um, I'm not too sure. I've, I've kind of, he said, give me a week. So yeah, it's, wow. it's a pretty, yeah. Wow. Big things are happening for you. That's so exciting. So what's, what's next for you after this single is finally released? Yeah, um, I've got some other um, songs that I want to get recorded. Um, I kind of want to keep the momentum going, so I'm, I'm aiming to get another one out um, by um, November-ish. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's just more writing, um, more recording definitely because I've got a whole whole bank of songs. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for, um, yeah, for my, my plans for this year. That's exciting, yeah. It's going to be a big year for you, which is awesome, finally getting things released, which I guess would take a lot of courage, you know. As you said, you've written this song back in 2018 about a toxic relationship. Do you sometimes feel scared when you're writing that you're going to, you know, people are going to hear this? Does it question your vulnerability a bit when you're writing and scared to, you know, let everyone hear what you've been thinking? Yeah, it is. It's it's very you're very vulnerable. It's very, um, especially since the song's very raw, um, and a lot of the stuff that I write is raw. Um, yeah, it is. You 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 kind of let down your walls a bit and let people in, and these it's scary. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, and I think before um, that living in Ellie Beach, it was I was scared to sing songs that I had written because it is it's really confronting. Um, but yeah, I've kind of grown out of that and yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care anymore. So That's awesome. Good. Do you think that like from Ellie Beach and you being like so young and now you're in Sydney and you've got so much more experience behind you and connections and everything, is there anything that you would have told yourself back in Ellie Beach about, you know, do this sooner or bring this person sooner or anything like that? Yeah, no, for sure. I think um, I definitely should have connected with, other artists um other artists in the area especially because there's lots of talent up up that way of Queensland um 
So that's definitely a regret that I wish I had sort of pushed. Um, it was very much just myself um, and my guitar sort of doing stuff. So I wish I had, yeah, kind of immersed myself in more creativity um, back then for sure. Yeah. yeah awesome. All righty. So thank you so much for joining us on this podcast episode. It's been amazing to talk to you and yet again, just talk to another empowering female in the music industry. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, for having me. So let's go dancing one by one. You got your girl on the task and fumble. You, you were a guy with just a...